If you're interested in tracking your team's performance using Door or Accelerate metrics, then Sleuth is your best bet. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how Sleuth can help you track and improve your team's performance. This is the home page for your Door metrics. Sleuth shows you the four metrics you care about. Change lead time, which is the moment from when coding starts to when a change is deployed. Deployment frequency, which is looking how often you deploy. Failure rate, which is looking at the ratio of when your deployments fail and when they succeed. And mean time to recovery, so when you do fail, how long does it take you to recover? For each metric, Sleuth is showing you the difference of a period from the previous period. So for example, we're looking at the last 14 days, but you could be looking at the last quarter or last year. For each one, it's going to then show you how you have improved or gotten worse on each metric. So in this case, you can see that my team, so by the way, what I'm doing is I'm showing you my team using Sleuth to develop Sleuth. So the data you're seeing here is all live real data. The lead time has gone down in the last fortnight to this fortnight, which is awesome. Frequency has gone slightly down. Don't care about that too much. Failure rate's gone up by quite a bit, so I care about that a little bit more. Mean time to recovery. So Sleuth is showing you the metrics. It's showing you how they compare. The solid line is looking at your current period. The dashed line is looking at your previous period. Over here on the right, you're looking at how those metrics compare to the industry. So in the Accelerate book, it defined different categories, low-performing teams all the way up to elite teams, and what ranges those teams were performing in. And so Sleuth takes your metrics and applies that to those ranges to tell you where you're fitting. So for example, in Mean Time to Recovery, we're just a high-performing team. We're not an elite right now, so that's something we can improve. For each metric, Sleuth then tries to break down those metrics. For example, lead time is a popular one because people want to get changes out quicker. So for lead time, you're looking at the moment, the buckets of the major events that happen that compose your lead time. For example, your coding time, how long it takes for the change to start being reviewed, how long it's being reviewed, and how long to deploying to the target environment. Because note, Sleuth tracks not just production, but it can track any of your environments and not only tell you when a change is in an environment, but tell you differences between environments. Back to change lead time breakdown, we're looking at the different periods, and so you can find which ones you care about. For example, I can see that my review lag time has increased by quite a bit. That might be something I'm interested in. So I can click on that, and I can see that it's not too bad, except, oh, it's spiked here. So in addition to just showing you the metric, breaking it down, Sleuth will then show you which deployments most contribute to that metric. So for example, in my review lag time, I'm seeing this change most contributed to that metric so I can look into those changes. Because Sleuth is not just tracking your changes, but it's tracking the moment those hit production, your deployments. And that's really an important point here. Sleuth, the moment that we care about is the time that it hits your target environment, usually production. Then Sleuth goes backwards to figure out where it came from and forwards to figure out its health. So right now we're looking at this particular change. We're looking at what composed the change. So Sleuth will show you a timeline. This is where Sleuth brings together different sources of information, your issue tracker, your source code, your builds, things like that to show you the whole story. So you can see that we created an issue, then a commit happened, pull request is created, the first review happened, and then a bunch of rework until it was finally merged. And so when I'm looking up here at the bucket, I can see that we were in review for two hours, but it took two days for someone to pick it up. That might be a little bit disconcerting, but if I go over this date, I can see that the 26th was a Friday, and then people started reviewing it on the 29th. So there's the gap. It was because it was created on Friday and start reviewing on Monday. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. And that's what you can see with Sleuth. You can see how all these different pieces of information come together in one spot so you can see if there's a real problem or if there's not. So again, you have that breakdown of what took place in this change. And then as I said, it also Sleuth is looking forward to see the health of that change. So Sleuth allows you to find different metrics that you care about that define health for your team. These could be really high level metrics such as incidents and pager duty, or they could be really low level metrics such as database CPU or application CPU. As you can see from my team, we define a mix of these. We do application 500 errors, 
to database CPU, to century errors, to status page, to pager duty, trying to get that full picture of what is healthy for my project. For each one of these, you can click on and see how Sleuth is tracking. Because that's a common question we get, which is, how does Sleuth know that something is healthy? And the answer is, we let you define what's important to you, and then we'll track that over time. So for example, in this case, we're looking at database CPU. And you can see that every two minutes, Sleuth is going out to the, the metric system and pulling that value, the database CPU. And then Sleuth throws that into an anomaly detection algorithm to figure out what is normal and what is abnormal. And you can see the results of that algorithm. So it's figured out that all of this is normal, but then this is not normal. So if it ever got this high after a certain number of readings, that's configurable, Sleuth can then determine that your deployment is unhealthy and notify the people affected through Slack or some other means. This is where it can be really valuable at a low level for getting your developers engaged with your production, where they're not just deploying code, but they're notified on Slack when they affect production in a negative way. In this case, when the database CPU spikes, I want my developer notified that the to be aware of the impact that it caused. Because if you're just wanting to measure metrics, Sleuth can help you there. It can track the metrics very accurately because it's looking at the actual moment it went to production, not a proxy such as when the pull request is merged. But if you want to take it to that next level where you're improving your metrics, you need to find ways to connect your developers to production so they understand the impact of their changes and their impact on the metrics and then that motivates them to find ways to improve it. The other point to make here is how it's organized. So Sleuth organizes things in projects. Projects are generally speaking a team of people that are working on something. Within a project you can have sources of change. So code deployments is an obvious one. So in our case Sleuth is a monolith but we also have Terraform code that we want to have Sleuth track as well. Sleuth can then also track feature flags because often when a change is made to production and it hurts production, it's because someone enabled a feature flag if you're using that. So Sleuth can integrate with your feature flag system. Sleuth can then also look at your manual changes. This was where it gets really interesting because Sleuth wants to capture every change to your system, including manual ones. So maybe that's an operations team that did a one-off operation such as deleted some keys or did a scale up. Sleuth can track that and then track the health of it to let that person know if they broke anything, basically. So in one spot, Sleuth can show you every possible types of change that happened to your system, and then more importantly, from a Dora standpoint, roll that up into metrics so that you can accurately measure your team's performance. If you're interested in not just tracking your metrics, but also improving them, Sleuth has a couple features you might find interesting. First, Sleuth can integrate with Slack to not only tell your developers when a deployment happens, but when it goes unhealthy. This can be really useful to let developers know when their code, not just any code, but their code goes unhealthy. This can be figured in their user profile area where they can be notified personally when this happens. Also, Sleuth has what we call an actions framework that allows you to automate some of the aspects of software development. In particular, we have a number of actions that might be useful, such as a Slack approval workflow, where when a deployment happens to a certain environment, let's say staging, you can use Sleuth to kick off an approval message where your developers can thumbs up or thumbs down that deployment. And if it gets enough thumbs up, then it's automatically promoted to the next environment. So different ways where it's kind of connecting different pieces together. For example, when code's deployed, if there's an issue that's mentioned, transition it to one state from another, things like that. So if you're interested in that, if you go to the About area, you can see the documentation on what variables and what actions are available to you. And we also have a cookbook where you can see some use cases on ways that you might use Sleuth to help automate the delivery of your software. Finally, I want to answer a couple common questions we get when we demonstrate Sleuth. First is, how do I just see one of these sources of change? Well, on this dashboard, you can see up here under deployments, I can choose just application or just Terraform if I wanted to narrow down the metrics to just that one single source of change. This can be a really useful way if you have a team that has multiple microservices and you want to understand the metrics of one microservice uh, versus another microservice, something like that. Another common question we get is how do I get at this information other than the Sleuth UI? Well, Sleuth has 
an endpoint, a GraphQL endpoint that your developers can then query to get all this information that you're seeing in the Sleuth UI, get it programmatically and do whatever you want with it. Another common question is how does information get into Sleuth? What is Sleuth actually needing? Well, when you create a Sleuth deployment, what we do is we install a webhook into a repository. That way we can track changes as they happen. That's particularly useful for tracking pull request changes and capturing things like commits that have been rebased, but you still want to keep track of that commit for accurate change lead time metrics. However, when it comes down to the actual deployment itself, the way that we generally recommend people do is send us a webhook. What happens is, is you send us an HTTP post that says what SHA was deployed to what environment. Then Sleuth can go back to your source control system and figure out all the commits, all the pull requests, all the builds, and so on to pull out all that information into one spot for you. So again, Sleuth will need access to your repository in order to see meta information such as commit message commits, list of files in a commit, things like that. And then it will need to be notified from you when you do a deployment. So that allows Sleuth to integrate with any sort of build system. As long as you're able to put a little curl statement or an HTTP post statement somewhere in your build, you can tell Sleuth that a deployment happened. If you'd like to learn more about Sleuth, please visit our webpage at sleuth.io and you can either live chat with us here or send us a message or we have a link down at the bottom called documentation where you can see our technical documentation that goes into a lot more detail on the topics we discussed here. Finally, if you'd like, you can go to the Sleuth page and request a demo as I'm always excited to show you what we're working on here at Sleuth and talk about how it might be a fit for you as you look to improve your team's performance. On the screen are several links to videos that also might be interesting to you. Thanks for watching.